Welcome back to Oak Haven. It's another time to come walk through the woods, see what's up now. It's, uh, the woods is changing every day. Some things are going to seed and being uh, less obvious. Some things are becoming more obvious, uh, but it's beautiful all the way around. So um, here we have a whole carpet of the woodland phlox that looks beautiful with the, the purple. It goes up into the, the lavender of the red buds over here. There's a dogwood up here that's just starting to, to open up. We'll save that for another time when it opens up into its, uh, into its full glory. Um, but we'd walk through the woods and uh, just see what's up is what we want to do today. You can hear the white-throated sparrow calling off in the distance. It's always fun. Here's the woodland phlox, just to review a little bit, with its kind of heart-shaped leaves with the, the uh, cut taken out of the petal. We've got the small flowered buttercup scattered through here, right back here with that very small flower. We've got spring beauties that have not opened up for the day yet. May apples. We have some wild leeks. Excuse me. Hi. You're going to sit on that wild leek? There's still some over here. <laughs> some wild leeks or ramps. We've got a little honeysuckle here that Kimber is laying on. We'll take care of that. Show it. Okay. There's a little honeysuckle that uh, we just pulled up. Looks like it didn't grow from a root sprout. It grew from a, a seed that was dropped off someplace. Just going to throw that down with the roots up. Here's a red trillium. I call this red trillium. Red trillium may be not the best name for this because there's another species of trillium called red trillium that has a long stalk. This is actually sessile trillium, but you start using words like sessile and you start, people start to glaze over. Sessile means uh, without a stalk, so the flower doesn't have a stalk. It's, uh, it, it's right up against these bracts that look like leaves here. Uh, this is sessile trillium. There's another species of trillium that looks very much like this called recurved trillium, where these little sepals here will curl underneath. The bracts actually have a little bit of a, a stem that leaves room for these sepals to, to curl underneath. That's recurved trillium. But this is sessile trillium, also called toad shade. So if you prefer the, the common name toad shade, it's kind of fun to think about a little toad sitting at the base of it, finding shade in the, uh, from the trillium. Here we have the ginger as the leaves are getting bigger. The, the buds have still not opened up yet. Right next to it here, we have golden seal, which is a fun plant. A beautiful flower. It's just like all anthers. It doesn't have any petals. It's just a very different look. Golden seal is in the buttercup family. Buttercups tend to have a lot of uh, interesting chemicals in them, which makes them uh, tend to be... Uh, poisonous if eaten at the wrong time, but it also gives them uh, some medicinal properties. So golden seal is something that's, uh, that's collected for uh, medicinal use, herbal medicinal use. Um, it, it's over-harvested in a lot of places. I think it's listed as endangered or threatened in seven or eight states in the United States. Uh, Ohio does not list it, list it as threatened or endangered, but the population is definitely beat back uh, by people harvesting this when... Uh, over harvesting this. Um, but pretty plant, it'll get a, a red fruit later on. The leaves will open up a little bit more. It's kind of fun. If you look over here, you can see the fiddlehead of this, uh, this Christmas fern growing here. Christmas fern, the leaves from Christmas fern stay green all year round. Now they're starting to, to lose their color, uh, but this is last year's leaves, uh, but it's green during Christmas, which is why it's called Christmas fern. Although I tend to like the, the idea that uh, the leaf has this little appendage on the side that makes it look a little like a Christmas stocking. That's one of the diagnostic things about Christmas fern. Uh, but it has this, this kind of hairy fiddle leaf when it comes up in the spring. 
have to do some weeding here. This is burning bush. Burning bush. We, we used to have a burning bush in the yard in the landscaping, and then we started to find it growing up in the, the woodlands, and we decided that it wasn't worth having in the, the landscape. We liked it. It's beautiful in the fall, but uh, it wasn't worth what it was doing to the woods because we were finding it over and over again uh, in the, the woods, and it was forming like dense mats in the woods. So we cut it out of the landscaping. We've replaced it with a, uh, actually a sour cherry tree that we can get fruit off of, and it's beautiful right now. Maybe we'll walk past it a little bit later. That's more landscaping, not woodlands, but um, it brings us joy in the spring. It just doesn't have the color in the fall. Um, and slowly but surely, we're getting rid of all of the babies from that, that burning bush that we had in our landscaping for a lot of years. This is a bed straw. Bed straw has almost set the record for the smallest flowers that we have here. I mean, that's obviously not true, but it just seems like they're just tiny little flowers. Um, this is called cleavers. Yeah, okay, hard to get it to focus on that little flower there. But it has this whirl of leaves. That's what makes it... Uh, look like a bed straw, and I'm going to pick a little bit of this and show you why it's called cleavers. Cleavers sticks to anything, so you can imagine an animal walking by, uh, it's going to stick to their fur and they walk around and that's the way it can spread its seeds and, and uh, distribute its, its, uh, the plants around someplace else. What's sticky? What's sticky? Yeah. It's got these tiny little hairs on the bottom of the leaves. So I'll, I'll wear that as my, my badge for the day. So here's a jack in the pulpit. Interesting flower, you have to get down on the ground and look at a jack in the pulpit to fully appreciate what it looks like. It's got this little um, the flowering stalk in this very elaborate hood here. Jack in the pulpit is a is in the monocot family. You know, I, I I make a big point of talking about monocots and dicots because it's the easiest big division of different plants, and say that monocots have parallel veined leaves. Um, Jack in the pulpit does not have parallel veined leaves, um, so it's kind of the exception to the rule. Here's a clump of the Christmas fern where the fiddleheads have opened up much further. Uh, so you can see all this new growth and we're starting to lose this old growth that was from last year that, that stayed green through the winter. It's not in flower right now, but there's a bloodroot leaf right next to it. Can't show you a flower of it because I think those are all spent by now. Here's a flower that I'm not willing to give the designation of wildflower, even though it's wild and it's a flower. This is garlic mustard. We've been fighting this for years. I'm going to weed, uh, weed this out. Non-native, very invasive species. I think most people are familiar with garlic mustard. It's also in the mustard family. Uh, so you can see it's got the four petals and the cross-shaped um, uh, pattern here in the crucifery, like a crucifix. Uh, garlic mustard. We spend hours and hours and hours weeding garlic mustard in our woods, and fortunately, you know, I don't see any more of it in this area, so we're actually making some headway. That's always great. Garlic mustard, when it grows, has this root that grows horizontally along the ground rather than going deep into the ground, which makes it much easier to, to pick successfully. Uh, but there's a lot of it, and it produces a lot of seeds. Um, and it produces seeds. If I take this and I, like, stick it up in this tree here, these this flower will continue to produce seeds and will produce viable seeds even though it's nowhere near the ground. So we can't just throw this on the ground like we might do with the honeysuckle. We take that and we package it up and stick it in our pocket or in a bag and uh, put it in the trash. So as we walk along, you may see off in the distance that we have these pin flags out. Pink pin flags indicate that we've collect garlic, we've collected garlic mustard here, or weeded garlic mustard from this area. 
The garlic mustard tends to uh, produce a heavy seed. It drops pretty close to the area. It's not spread pretty wide. You find it in patches. So we mark them with flags so that we know to go back and look. That's an area of concern that we, we would look at the, uh, um, around the pink flag for more garlic mustard. The blue flags are marking where we have uh, treated Japanese stilt grass. Japanese stilt grass is another very invasive weed. Uh, we've got a whole video on Japanese stilt grass, uh, but we, we've, we're trying to get it out of the woods uh, before it gets too out of hand. Uh, so we've marked areas so that we can go back and look at those too. So that's what the blue flags are as we walk along. So we're in an area that is very wet. It seems like there's a seep or something here that uh, it just always seems very wet. Um, I wanted to talk about this plant here, which is butterweed. You don't see it in the woods very often. Where you see it often is in the agricultural fields. You'll be driving along the road and you'll see whole agricultural fields of butterweed. And the reason for that is that uh, butterweed, it, it's, oh boy, it's, it's kind of native, but it used to be you would find a little bit of it and now you're finding huge amounts of it. So I would put it in the category of an invasive native plant. Uh, our agricultural practices tend to favor butterweed. It's a, a winter annual, so it produces seeds, it drops seeds to the ground. During the winter, those seeds sprout and grow up a rosette, so they're growing in the spring. And then at the right time, like right now, it bolts up into this um, beautiful tall yellow flower uh, and then produces a, a seed pod that looks a little like a dandelion puff, the white uh, puff of, of dandelion seeds and then spreads its seeds around which will germinate and grow through the winter again. Now the way farmers that use herbicides uh, take care of their weeds is they will put down a pre-emergent herbicide in the spring which knocks back weeds that are, are sprouting in the spring which is most weeds, the seeds that it would be sprouting. Butterweed has already sprouted so a pre-emergent herbicide doesn't do anything for it. So it, what it does is it uh, it clears the, 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 the slate for butterweed to just go crazy. So you drive around right now, you'll see fields of this yellow butterweed. You'll also see some of the wild mustards. Um, but uh, but we're, we're creating a, an, an environment where we favor this butterweed. And I'm a little concerned about what to do with it in the woods. You know, here we'll, we have a, a fair amount of it in this little patch here, this little wet area. Uh, but I don't know, should we take it out because it has the potential to be invasive or do we leave it because it's native? We haven't resolved that yet. Um, if you've got thoughts on it, uh, leave it in the comments section. It's got a pretty flower. It's in the composite family of the aster family. So it's actually a whole series of flowers. It has each one of these petals is actually an individual ray flower and then each one of these little things in the middle is an individual disc flower that, that makes a whole clump of disc flowers that make the center disc in, the, in a, an aster. Uh, this is not a spring wildflower but as we're here uh, this is an ash tree that has succumbed to emerald ash borer and you can see that as the wood was rotting and insects were getting in there to uh, eat the rotting wood and then birds have come along. I'm guessing that like a pileated woodpecker has been here uh, ripping this apart looking for insects in this dying ash tree. So here we are in the landscaping. I apologize for that, but we did mention the, the sour cherry tree. And th the reason I'm bringing it up is because we did a video on how uh, the, the burning bush shouldn't be used in your landscape because it is so invasive in the woodlands. And someone responded and said they really love their, their um, burning bush in, in the fall. And I can appreciate that. Um, but you, know, you need to find what brings you joy here. We're going to be a Marie Kondo uh, moment here. Um, this brings me joy in the, in the spring. And yeah, it doesn't have the fall color. But you know, if, if I can find something that is a better alternative to, to something that was destructive, the, uh, the burning bush is definitely a destructive thing in the woodland, and this is not invasive, so it's not going to escape out into the woodlands, you know, let me focus my joy in something that uh, has all of the positive and none of the negatives. So just something to keep in mind. You know, as I'm talking here, I look down, and if you want to look down here, here is a remnant 
of that burning bush that we took out of here that we still need to weed. We're, you know, we're going to be fighting this burning bush for years probably. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that we got rid of it, even though we don't have that beautiful fall color anymore. Anyway, there's my soap opera for a little, or my uh, soapbox for a little bit. Well, since we've crossed the boundary between the woodlands and the landscaping here, as we're walking by, we'll take advantage of an opportunity to, to see Julie's uh, woodland garden or shade garden because it's in its glory right now. This is just the best time to, to view it. Um, it. It's amazing with all of the, the bluebells in bloom here and there's woodland flocks scattered through here for all the purple. Here's this beautiful uh, bleeding heart. Bleeding heart is in the same, same genus as the Dutchman's breeches that we have out in the woods. Uh, it's very pretty. There's a Lenten rose here. The uh, wood poppy or a celandine poppy that is theoretically native to this area. Uh, we didn't get it from our, our woods, but it, it is a native plant. There's hostas through here. Bellwort. We've got the um, Christmas fern coming up as we walk along here, you know, scattered through here. It's things that might be weeds to some people, but it's, uh, it's our woodland plants. It's uh, um, spring beauty. We've got uh, cutleaf toothwort through here. There's this big patch of um, Jacob's ladder that we collected from the woods that's in bloom now. Uh, that's pretty. There's Dutchman's breeches. There's uh, this twin leaf, which is already spent. It's, it's lost its blooms, but it's starting to to create its seed pods. We collected this from the woods. We have a, just an incredible slope of twin leaf that is packed with twin leaf. Uh, it's really beautiful. Here we've got, uh, oh, there's, oh, this very healthy trout lily growing here. Again, has set its seed. There's, um, uh, next to this epimedium, there's uh, this Virginia um, water leaf. We don't actually have Virginia water leaf growing in our woods. It could certainly be native and could grow around here. Uh, but here's some Virginia water leaf. It just brings me joy to look at this if we're talking about things that bring joy. Uh, this is like a little microcosm of our woods packed in here and we can see what's going on and uh, see what's blooming in various parts of the woods. So we talked about butterweed over there. Uh, this is in the same genus. Uh, used to be Senecio, now it's Pecora. This is golden ragwort, or golden uh, groundsel. Uh, pretty flower, forms a dense, dense uh, ground cover. So you, you find it here, and then I can, see, I can see some scattered through the woods, but uh, this is an area that it gets some sun because it's right next to the driveway, and it, it flourishes really well. This is uh, Pecora aureus. Um, there's another one that looks very much like this uh, that uh, has an oval leaf that doesn't have this little notch in there. It makes it look more heart-shaped. Um, aureus meaning golden from aurum, uh, the Latin for gold, which is where we get uh, the, the, uh, the chemical symbol for gold is AU. That's for aurum. This is aureus because of the golden color here of the, the golden groundsel golden ragwort. Well, again, it's a tree, not a, a, an herbaceous wildflower, but it, it is wild and it's a flower. So uh, this is Ohio buckeye. Since we're in Ohio, we really should talk about that a little bit. And that's just an incredible flower that the Ohio buckeye has. Um, very impressive. Buckeye is one of the first trees to come out. Buckeyes are known from the big bu um, um, bud on the end of the, the leaf. Uh, and uh, you can see what that bud does. It just creates this huge um, cl cluster of flowers here. Very pretty. So that's a sampling of what's going on in our woods right now. There's still a lot that we couldn't uh, cover in this amount of time, but uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come over and go for a walk with us in the woods. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. We appreciate new subscribers. Um, we're always interested in more conversations, so if you want to leave comments in the comment section, we'll try to get back to you on that. So thanks for coming along.